Okay, hello everyone. So we are moving on to question 2.2. Just a point from the last question. I actually realized that I just need to add a comment there. So for this first question, the 2.1.1, where we had to write out the market value in words, I didn't put the word RAND in. Now, <laughs> I was the one who harped on about this in previous videos, but it's important to put the RAND because that indicates what you're actually talking about, right? It's not 944,630, um, like, Nanas, right? It's rand. So it's important to put that, right? So just to indicate that there. Okay, then let's go on to this next question. Okay, so this is 2.2 um, and we are talking a bit about Josh. So Josh owns, let me check, you can see what I'm say, seeing. Cool. So it says, Josh owns a specifically designed refuse removal truck. He hires out his truck at a daily rate of 3,000 rand, excluding fuel. Uh, a group of friends decided to use the truck for the day to carry their refuse to the nearby dumping ground, right? So it says the graph below indicates, excuse me, indicates um, the amount each person will pay depending on the number of friends, right? So what's important is that you see in this graph, right? If it's just me on my ace, right? If it's just me, I pay 3,000 rand. If I go with one of my mates, right? Then I, we each pay 1,500 rand. And as the number of people or the number of persons, very specific, the number of persons, right, increases, the amount that each person pays decreases, right? Because that 3,000 Rand is a set amount, but the number of people contributing towards that 3,000 Rand, as that increases, the amount that they each pay decreases. So for argument's sake, if there were 3,000 people that hired this truck for the day, each of them would pay one rand because 3,000 rand needs to be paid. There's 3,000 people. Each of them would pay one rand. I'm not sure why 3,000 people would um, hire a dump uh, removal truck, but there you have it. That is just the explanation. So let's jump into this question and see what it is about. So it says use the graph above to answer the questions that follow. So it says state the type of proportion represented in the graph above. So what's important, and I have explained it, is that as the number of people increases, right, the number of the amount that they each pay decreases, right? So one thing increases and the other thing decreases. And the word that we give to that is inverse. So this is a inverse relationship. Let me just make sure you can see what I'm writing. Cool. Inverse relationship. Okay, smash that question. Next one. So it says, write down the number of friends in the group if each paid 500 rand. Now, there's two ways of getting to this, right? You could, one, just go into the graph and find where you think 500 rand is. So 500 rand looks like it's over here, and it kind of looks like it's six people, right? So you could probably just write six people, or you can calculate it, right? You can say, I know that I have to pay 3,000 rand, or me and my group of friends, or... or um, associates have to pay 3,000 Rand and each of us are paying 500 Rand, right? So we know that if you say 3,000 divided by 500, you can check me on your calculator, equals three, I mean six people or six friends, right? So 3,000 divided by 500 gives us six, which means that six people are contributing towards this cost of 3,000 Rand, okay? So again, you can read it off or you can do a calculation, whichever you prefer. Okay, you get the marks either way. Now, for 2.2.3, it says calculate the amount each person will pay if seven friends hire the truck. Now, what's important is this word calculate. Okay, calculate means that we cannot just read it off the graph. Okay, and also even if we did want to read it off the graph, you see seven over here. We kind of don't know what that is. It's like kind of floating in the space. We know it's over 400, but we don't exactly know how much it is, right? And they want the cal they want us to calculate, so they want an exact amount. So you can't just be like, you know, I think it's 410 Rand and leave it at that. You can't do that, right? You have to do it specifically. So we're going to do a similar um, approach to what we did in the previous question. So we say 3,000 divided by 7. So we want to say how much did each of those people pay? So we say here 3,000 divided by 7. And it gives us 428 points. Okay, so now we have the most amount of <laughs> decimal places. But again, when we talk about currency, you can only have two decimal places, right? So don't be like putting in all of them because ain't nobody got time for that, right? You can only put in two. So round it off. We know that one is less than four, right? So it's going to be um, five, seven. 
And the reason I'm saying that one is less for, than four is remember if it, if it goes from zero to four, a decimal place, then we round down, right? And if it is from five to nine, we round up, okay? Just a little reminder there if you're like, what is this girl speaking about? That is what I'm speaking about. Okay, cool. So that's that. Smash the question. It's We know it's over 400. We can see... Um, that we expected it to be over 400, but now we know exactly how much it is, right? So we actually, um, oh, we're doing really well. We have done now seven marks, okay? Let's move on to 2.2.4. Now, 2.2.4 is an interesting one, right? And you can see I've written on here a little bit just to help myself understand, right? And what we have here is it's very important to read this question because when it comes to these finance questions, they can sometimes get a little bit tricky and they, they throw in these little sort of curveballs. So let's just make sure we understand. So it says, Josh saves 500 Rand each month, right? Since earning his first profits. So he's basically doing it every month since he started getting his first 500 Rand. He has now accumulated amounts of 17,000 Rand. He's living his best life, okay? And then table two below, this is here, shows the simple interest rate that would be earned over the fixed period. Over fixed periods. Oh, sorry. I'm yawning so much this morning would be earned over fixed periods, right, for months ranging from 10,000 Rand to 99,000 Rand, 999, right? Um, so we know that 17 falls in between those two, okay? We're happy with that. So we know that we are at least dealing with the right intervals. And then we have here this table where it's telling us these different months, right? It's important to note that this is months and not years, right? It's in months, and then there's two different amounts that of interest, different interest rates you can earn depending on how much money you have. So here is from 10,000, right, to 24,999. And here is from 25,000 to 99,999. Okay, so we have these two. We know he's going to be sitting over here because he has 17,000 Rand, right? 17 is between 10 and 24,999. 999. Sure, these numbers are defeating me today. Okay, so let's go to our first question. So it says here, determine in months, important, they told you the units of measurement they want, how long he takes to save 17,000 Rand. He took, right? He took to save 17,000 Rand. So what we're going to say here, um, first of all, let's write our reference, okay? So these 17,000 Rand, and we know that he, he, saves 500 per month, right? So he's 17,000 and he saves that much per month. So if you put that into your calculator, you'll see that that is 34 months. So what that's telling us, right, is that he saved, he saved 500 Rand per month for 34 months in order to get to 17,000 Rand. Okay, so that is that question there. Then let's now go to 2.2.4. B. Okay, so now this one says, write down the interest rates he will get if he invests his money for three years. Okay, so here what's interesting is they've given us it in years, but we know that our term is in months. So we need to convert some of these into months, or we need to convert our three years into months, right? I'm going to do years to months. We know that there are 12 months in a year, right? So I'm going to say 3 times 12 equals 36 months. So we know that we are sitting over here, and we know that we are in this column. So he's going to be getting... 8.3% right per annum or per year right that's what p.a means per annum annum means year right so that's how much he's going to be getting each year right perfect so let's now go on to c okay 2.2.4 c and it says determined rounded to the nearest hundred and this is quite important, right? Because they're telling us how they want us to present our answer. Nearest to the nearest hundred rand, the amount of interest Josh will earn if he invests his accumulated savings for three years, right? So we know that we're sitting over here. We know that that's our interest rate. We've just um, determined that. And now we need to understand how much interest he's going to earn. Also, what's very important, and I'm actually going to highlight this, is that we're talking about simple interest, okay? Now, simple interest, there's two types of interest. One is simple and one is compound. Simple interest says, okay, I only earn so much interest per year based on the capital amount I invested initially, 
right? Now that might sound complicated, but it just means every year I get the same amount of interest. In the first year, I get interest on 17,000 Rand. On the second year, I get interest on 17,000 Rand, right? And remember, interest is an amount that you get paid for letting someone else use your money, right? Or keep your money. If he gave 17,000 Rand to the bank, he's saying, okay, you can have my money and I'm not going to use it, but you have to pay me money in order for me not to use it, right? So that you can use it for something else. That's what interest is, okay? So that's simple interest. Compound interest, which is not asked in this question, but I still want you to understand it, is saying you earn interest on interest, right? So it's saying at the end of the first year, let's say he has 17,000 Rand, and let's say at the end of the first year he gets 18,000 Rand, right? So he gets 1,000 Rand worth of interest to get to an 18,000 Rand lump sum amount at the end of the first year. In the second year, he then earns interest on the 18,000 Rand, not just on the 17,000 Rand. So he starts earning interest on interest and that's why compound interest is a very powerful tool because you can earn interest on interest right so that compound interest is great when you're earning it not so great when you're paying it right but that is just i think it's so important that you understand that so let's do this calculation it's only for three marks so we're not too phased we know it's not too difficult and let's just jump into that okay so we know that he has seventeen thousand rand let's write that so there's his initial, so I'm going to write here, his initial amount, right, equals 17,000 Rand. Okay, his interest rate, I always do a little funky eye like that, that's how we learned how to do it at university, um, is 8.3% per annum. Okay, and we know that his term is 3 years, right, or 36 months. Okay, so now let's let's calculate how much interest he earns in the first year. So I'm going to say here, year one. So in year one, he's going to earn 17,000, right, times this 8.3%. This is how much interest he's going to earn. Okay, let's put that into our calculator. Okay, so he earns 1,000. Let me just ensure you can see what I'm writing. 1,411 Rand in the first year. So now remember what I said with simple interest, you earn the same amount every year. So in year two, he's also gonna earn an additional 1,411. And in year three, he's also gonna earn that. Okay, you earn the same amount every year. So it says, let's just check what it says. It says, determine the amount of interest Josh will earn, right? So he's just gonna, you're just gonna add all of these together just going to do a nice little addition sum so you can say one you can either say one four one one oh sorry one one times three right because there's three of them one two three or you can just say one four one one plus one four one one plus four one four one one if you want to put it that way we'll give you the same answer so his total interest right will equal four thousand two hundred and thirty three rand okay that's how much his total interest will be but what did it say we have not fully answered our question it says rounded to the nearest hundred right so it doesn't say rounded up it just says rounded so we just round off so remember what i said here about the rounding right if it's less than four we round down if it's between five and nine we round up so we know here that this 33 right we're talking about rounding off to the nearest 100. So what we can say is between 0 and 49, we're going to round, round down, right? And from 50 to 99, we round, sorry, we round up, right? So let's do that, right? So we know that this 33, right? When we're rounding to the nearest 100, we always look at the tens in the units. We see that 33 is less than 49, so it will be total interest will be 4,200 Rand. Does that make sense? I don't know why I'm asking you why it makes sense. You can't reply. But um, it's 4,200 Rand, right? That is the answer, okay? Rounded off. We've met all, all the requirements that they've asked of us in this question, and we can now go on to the next question. Right, so remember to label your question correctly for D and let's move on to greater things. Okay. 
So it says, Safiso wants to invest 24,000 Rand for 48 months instead of 12 months, right? So this is important, 48 months, and that's how much he's got, right? He's got all of the money. Cool. So let's now go and see what it says. It says, calculate the difference in percentage points for the interest rate, okay? Calculate the difference in percentage points for the interest rate. So like, you might be like saying, the difference between what, right? But this is important, right? This word instead. So instead tells us what we are comparing, right? We are comparing how much he would earn if he invested it for 12 months with how much he would earn if he invested it for 48 months. So what we're comparing is this 8.46% with this uh, 12 months, 7.5%. 76%, right? We're just comparing what the difference is, right? So we're going to say here, we're going to say 8.46%, right? Which is the 48 months. I'm just putting that little thing. Minus or subtract 7.76, 7.76%. And that is the 12 months, right? And if we put that in our calculator, we see that that is 0.7%. Right, so the difference in percentage points for the interest rate is the difference between those two. Okay, and that is our answer. Okay, so we've now done 2.2.4. Okay, let's now go on to 2.2.4 E. Sorry, we did D and now we're going on to E, which is the last question for this question. So it says, let me just make sure you can see what I'm seeing. Write down the minimum number of years minimum number of years and months, a person must invest 25,000 Rand to earn an interest rate of 8.41%. Of 8 okay, so now we know that this is 25,000. Now they're trying to trick us, right? So they're talking about this 25,000 Rand here. Okay, so we know now that we're in this, this column and not this column, right? Because he'd be talking about a bigger amount and that's important right so we know we're in this column and we know that we are looking for 8.41 percent so we go in this column oh there's 8.41 percent perfect so now we know if we go across we go across we go across it is 18 months right but they've asked us to write the minimum number of years and months so we have to put it into years so we know that it is 18 months that's not difficult 18 months right but we need to put that into years. So remember, if we want to convert something into years, we say 18 from months to years, we say 18 divided by 12, and it says 1.5 years. So it is the same as 1.5 years. But they've said here, you need to say the number of years and months, right? So you kind of have to say one year and six months. Now you might be saying, Margie, how did you get the six months? Well, half of a year, half of 12, right? This is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 means half, right? The same as a half, right? So half of 12. So if we say half times 12, that gives us six, right? So it is one year and six months. And that is our final answer. And we have actually completed this question and are ready to go on to the next. Okay. I hope that was helpful. See you in the next video, guys.